Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting Periwinkle Pig and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Pinot Noir. And if you enjoy this video, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so what I'm gonna be using for materials today is a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt sienna, which I will call rust. I have Mars black, deep yellow, ultramarine blue, fluorescent purple, and fire red. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil. I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number seven round brush, and I have a number one round brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that are gonna help you through your painting process or could help you through your painting process. Uh, one of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the brushes and the paint and the palette and all that good stuff. So that's down there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are drawing an outline for our barn window. So. I'm gonna use my pencil. I'm gonna give you a couple of dots. We'll connect the dots and then by the time we're done, we'll have something that is a barn window with some good perspective on it. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to first make myself a rectangle. So I am going to, up in the top left-hand corner, I'm gonna come in about four inches from the left-hand side. So you can just kind of travel over around four or so inches and then I'm going to come down about three inches and I'll make myself a little bit of a marker and then I'm going to make a similar mark on the other side but I don't want to really guess at that side so you can use your brush or any other tool that you'd like as a measuring tool and I can say all right well I put this one about this height I measure I marked it with my finger then I'm going to come over to the right hand side and even if you're not exactly you know four inches away somewhere around there would work it's okay if this is different than this but the height you want to have pretty similar to one another so then I'll just make myself another marker and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come directly below this one and make another mark a little bit <coughs> excuse me I have a little tickle in my throat a little bit I want more space on the bottom than I have on the top so if I did three inches here about I would do like four or four and a half inches down here and it's in the same amount of distance so you can use your fancy measuring tool to measure how far in you came so you want this to be of a similar depth then I'm going to come down to about here make myself another marker and then I can do the same exercise on the other side so I could say all right this is about the height come on over here put it directly below that one make myself another mark and if you wanted to just double check your math you can certainly use your brush as your as your measuring tool and then you're gonna connect the dots <laughs> this does not have to be a perfect line I'm just gonna kind of sketch myself 
a rectangle here, just connecting my dots, something like that. We have a whole bunch of painting that we're gonna do on top of this, so if your lines are not perfect, no worries. Plus, we're just making an old wooden barn window here, so nothing doesn't need to be fancy. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up into the left-hand corner, I'm gonna come down about an inch, make myself a mark, and I'm gonna connect that to this corner something like that. I'm gonna do the same up in the top right, come down about an inch, make a mark, connect that mark to my corner. I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom left, bottom right. So you could come up a little bit higher than an inch because this is a little bit more of a distance, but don't come up much more than like an inch and a half or so. It doesn't need to be that much, but it could perspective wise be a little bit bigger than that one. And then again, just connect those two. Same thing over here, about an inch and a half or so, and connect those two. So what we've just done is we've made the door, the openings for it. I wanna put a little piece of wood up at the top. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna extend this maybe about a half of an inch to an inch. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna connect these two, something like that. I wanna have an arch way somewhere in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just come down a little bit, maybe about a half of an inch from there, and then just curve this corner and do the same thing on this side. And you can just eyeball that. That's whatever is visually appealing to you. And then I'm gonna give myself um, a little border down here as well. So I'm gonna bring this down maybe about an inch or so. And same thing on this side. And then I'm just going to connect these two like this. And that is all we're going to do for our outline. We will be using our large brush for the next step. So you can put your pencil away, take out your large brush, get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm going to be doing for the next step is I am painting this center um, shape, which is the inside of my barn. I'm going to be using my large brush and I'm gonna be using black paint only. So I'm, this is gonna actually act as a base coat for our adorable little pig as well. Um, so you don't need to do any fancy brush stroke. You just really wanna get a nice coat on there. Um, sometimes when we're using these bristle brushes, if you're using a similar brush to me, you might end up with little scratch marks throughout this black paint. So if that is not an appealing look to you, then what you can do is just let it dry for a second and you can do a second coat on it. Um, but usually black covers pretty well. I'm not doing any special brush stroke. I'm just getting it on there. Black covers pretty good. So you don't really, once it's dried, you typically are not gonna really see those brush marks. But again, Depends on what kind of brush you're using, what kind of paint you're using. So if when this dries, you have some little scratch marks that are not appealing to you, you can always just do a second coat. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step, but you do not need to wash it. So just take a break and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're painting the barn siding. So this is gonna be this top section and this bottom section. I'm gonna be using my big bristle brush and I'm gonna be using brown, rust, and yellow. And I'm gonna use all of those colors. I'm just gonna kinda of alternate them and do a left to right brush stroke. I've got black on my brush right now. I'm gonna pick up some rust as well. And I'm just gonna go left to right. I know I have these little kind of weird crevice areas to contend with, so when I get to there, you can really just do whatever brush stroke comes naturally to you, but I'm just looking for something that is going to resemble maybe wood in shadows, because <laughs> we're gonna have, or old weathered wood. Um, we're gonna have a bunch of other stuff on the canvas that I want to take um, advantage of them being the focal point. I don't really want this siding of the barn to be the focal point, but I want it to have some nice neutral and natural colors in it. So that's why I'm using these three colors. So again, I'm using 
the black that was on my brush, but I have not picked up any additional black. I'm just using um, rust and the yellow in addition to the remnants of the black that were on my brush. So you could certainly make this of any tonal value that you want, but I am just looking for it to be nice and neutral. I probably should put some more paint on my brush because I feel I'm, I'm trying to scrub it on right now. So let me just put a little more paint on my brush and I'll have an easier time. And if you bump into your um, pencil mark, that is perfect. That is intended for you to bump into it. We will be painting over it anyways. So if you bump into it, no worries. You just wanna get a nice coat on here. And once we are done with this step, you're gonna be using the same paintbrush and you don't have to wash it. So you can just, you know, take a break and, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing for the next step is I am painting the, the doors for my window. I'm gonna be using my super dirty paintbrush <laughs> and I'm gonna also be using some white. So the colors I'm using are black, rust, yellow, and white. My goal for this is I want these to be lighter than this background. So that's why I'm adding white to it. And maybe they end up being a little bit more gray so it looks more like weathered wood that's been open and it stays open and it's been a little sun bleached or rain weathered or whatever. So I'm using my dirty brush. I just picked up white paint and I'm gonna just kind of see what color I get. So, and whatever I do over on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of make similar marks on the other side just so I can, you know, see what color I, I get. I'm gonna be doing a vertical brush stroke and I'm clearly running out of paint on my brush right now. So I'm gonna pick up all four of those colors at once. So I'm going a little black, a little yellow, a little rust and a little white. I want my, I gotta get a top edge up in through here and then I can just start pulling it down. And you can have yours really light, really dark. It's totally up to you. I'm going for a lighter look to it. But again, this is, it's your painting. So if you want to have yours way darker or like a richer, newer kind of wood color, maybe you use more of the rust and the yellow. That's going to make it look like newer wood. So totally up to you. And I'm bringing it all the way to the edges and just doing this vertical kind of brush stroke. And then I'll go ahead and do the other side. So rust, yellow, black, and white. I'm gonna put it up in through here. And you can see my edges or my door itself is lighter than that back, than that, um, than the siding that we put on a couple minutes ago. So that way you're gonna be able to see it in front of it. So that's really my, my biggest goal is I wanna make sure that I can see it in front of the other, um, the other sections that we did. And when I do this bottom edge, I know I want ver vertical stripes, but I've gotta get a, kind of a clean edge. So I go that way and while it's wet, I can still, I'll just pull it up. So that helps me to give a clean edge, but a nice vertical um, brush stroke as well. And then we are gonna actually switch brushes to our medium brush. So once you've got your doors with, their, with this nice base coat on them, you can put this large brush away wherever you'd like to, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing for the next step is I am doing these two molding pieces in through here. And again, I'm using the same colors. So I'm gonna use black, rust, yellow, and white. But for these pieces, I want them to look like there's a little bit more sunshine on them. So I'm gonna have them pretty light like these, maybe even a little bit lighter, and I'm gonna be using more of the yellow and the rust with it too. So I'm going yellow, rust, and um, white on my brush at the same time just to kind of get this this started and I'm going to use a lot of paint on my brush so I have um, good kind of control over it and I can uh, get some nice kind of clean edges to it but they don't have to be super duper clean because again this is meant to look like 
old weathered wood so don't feel the need to get them really on the perfect side I'm gonna go ahead and go along this edge and I'm just picturing this to be you know a piece of wood that was that was hanging out in you know in the garage somewhere when they built this barn and it's just got all kinds of character in it and you know you can make it whatever value you want and whatever it could be more on the gray side if you want so you can use more black and white so really just get it into a place that is visually appealing for you I'm going right up to the edge where it's meeting that black and I can't see the difference between these two right here so I have to do something about that so I'm going to add a little bit of white and make my this uh, the molding piece a little bit lighter and you can see I have all these beautiful tones within it so we will be um, adding maybe a little bit of highlight to it later so you don't have to worry about it being perfect right now I'm gonna go ahead and do this one down here yellow rust and white is where I'm starting and then maybe I'll go a little black and white just to get some some nice gray in there and again just f feel it on your own visual preference if you're if you're feeling like you want it more again on the newer side you'll want to go more with that rust and the yellow to make it look more of a richer wood tone you could even you know if you've got different colors that you want to play with feel free to do so but I'm just going with some nice a nice you know lighter toned weathered grayish kind of look here wood um, and then we are going to be using our the same brush the medium brush for the next step so once you've got your borders or these little molding pieces on here you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're going to be doing for the next step is we are putting some additional wood pieces on our doors. So these are just going to be some nice interior molding pieces. I'm going to be using my medium brush and I'm just going to use black and white. I want to just have it gray so I can really, it really kind of pops out from the door itself. So I'm just putting black and white on my brush at the same time. And what I'm going to do is I'm just, I'm just going to eyeball this. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to split this piece in like thirds. So I'm just going to kind of make myself a little bit of a mark here and a little bit of a mark here. And I want this to kind of be a perspective element. So I'm going to make them in similar angles to these, only maybe not quite at such a diagonal. And then as I make this line going towards the edge of my canvas, I'm going to make it wider. So it's going to start pretty thin in through here, maybe about a quarter of an inch. And then by the time it gets to here, it's going to be maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch wide. So I'm going to start in through here and I'm just going to kind of get myself. I want it to hang over into um, this black area as well. So I just am going to make myself a little kind of beginning starting point. And then I'm watching this as my angle. I'm just gonna start with one line to start something like that. And then I'm just gonna keep reloading my brush with black and white and I will get this line to be wider as it comes towards the edge of my canvas. So you could certainly measure this out just to make sure that you're either at the right angle or that it, um, it looks correct, but Again, this is just an old wood piece that we're <laughs> putting on here, so I'm sure it doesn't have, and it's the door, so it's not really a structural element to the, to the barn, so if it's not perfect, nothing's gonna fall down. So, <laughs> I, so I'm gonna start again over here, bring this into the black area a little bit, so something like that. And then this one, I'm watching that angle, but I don't want it quite as angled. So this one is almost going to be just horizontal, maybe a little, maybe a slight angle on it. And again, I just keep reloading my brush with black and white so that way I have these almost like little streaks of different tones of that, of that gray in through there, like a nice 
old piece of wood. So there we go, that's what I'm gonna do for this side. And then I'm gonna do the same exercise on the other side. So I'm just gonna kind of visually split these, this long one in threes. So I'm, I'm guessing about there and maybe about there. I'm probably a little off, I'm okay with that. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna start my, um, oops, you need more white so you can see that. Start this inside the black area a little bit. And then as I go towards the exterior, I'm watching this angle and doing it at a little bit less of an angle. So something like this. And then I'll just get it a little bit wider as it goes to the exterior edge of my canvas. So something like this. And again, my line is about I would say about a quarter of an inch wide at the skinny part and maybe about a half to three quarters of an inch, maybe even an inch, I don't know, somewhere around there for the um, exterior part of it. And again, we're gonna put highlights and shadows on it later, so you don't have to worry about it being too, too perfect at this point. So I've got my start right in through here. This is my angle, so I want it a little bit less of an angle, so something like this and again it's going to get wider as it gets towards the edge of my the exterior edge of my canvas and then we are going to be using the same brush for the next step so you can just wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting the base coat for our little piggy. So I'm going to be using my medium brush and the colors that I'm using are rust black and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself kind of like a, a dark mauve color for those of you who remember mauve from the year 1984 I think. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my burnt sienna and I'm not going to use all of it. I'll, I'll use a good amount but not, not all of it. I'm going to save some for later. And then I'm going to desaturate it which means I'm adding gray paint to it or a little bit of black and white because black and white makes gray so I'm gonna take a touch of black and I recommend that when you do this you just do a little bit at a time and because it's tough to reverse what you've done so I just added a little bit of black and a little bit of white and that is clearly not enough for me so I'm gonna add a little bit more I'm going for something that looks about like this color so it's like a pasty kind of pinky tan color that's my technical description for it <laughs> and so once I've got the color yeah this is looking pretty good I'm, I think I'm gonna go a little bit lighter little little touch more white in through there and it doesn't have to be exactly you don't have to go for exactly the same color as I have. We're just looking for something that's gonna give us a really nice base coat for the pig. Um, and I do wanna forewarn you that it will dry a little bit darker than it is when it's wet. So just kind of mentally be prepared for that as you go through the process. So I think that's looking pretty good for me. Maybe a little more gray tiny bit more black and white, just to, to get it so it's not so vibrant for me. Yeah, there we go. All right, so once you've got it, that's, that's where I'm heading. Once you've got it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a couple of shapes, and then by the time we're done, it'll look like a nice kind of outline for our cute little, our cute little pig. So, I've got my color. I'm totally happy with it now. Can't you tell? I'm totally, <laughs> I keep, I'm done, really. I swear I am. So, all right, I've got it. I'm done now. So I'm gonna first start by making a sketcherly kind of circle. Um, I want my pig's head to be in through here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of eyeball where my center area is, and then I'm gonna come over to the right, maybe about an inch or so. So I'm almost a third of the way over from the right-hand side, and that's where like the top of my um, circle is gonna go. And then I'm gonna come directly below that, and I'm gonna be maybe a half of an inch to an inch away from the bottom of my canvas. And that's the top and the bottom, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of make myself a circle-ish from those two 
markers. So it might end up looking a little oval. It might end up looking, you know, very organic. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. We're just going for something that's going to give us a starting point for our entire head. So once you've got that in through there, then you just paint it in with your um, pig base color, <laughs> your 1984 mauve color that we've created, <laughs> our nice pasty pale color that we've created, um, drab color, I guess. So now that I've got that on there, what I'm going to do is I want to give myself a couple of cute little pig ears. So I want to have a big, huge one over here, and then I'm going to have a little one over here. My pig is going to be looking in this direction here. So I'm going to have a, a large ear on this side. So I'm going to come up or down my head, maybe almost halfway. If this is my halfway down my head, I'm going to come up just a little bit from that, make myself a little bit of a mark. Then what I'm going to do is if this is the center of the top of my head, I'm going to come over to about here, make myself another mark. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come all the way over here. As you can tell, I like to have starting and stopping points. <laughs> I'm making myself the tip of the ear over in this vicinity in through there. So now I'm going to connect to my dots and I'm going to start on this right hand side. I'm going to make myself, and if you go over this edge, no worries. I'm actually going to paint right over mine. I'm going to give myself a little cute kind of um, exterior uh, part of the ear. This one is going to kind of come over in through here and it's going to bump up like that and then just kind of come and meet my marker in through there. And then I'm just going to paint it in with that color. So you might find that you want to, you know, reshape yours once you've got it on there. But just know that when we go to add all of the other details for the, um, for the ear and for the face and stuff, that they will take on a much better shape. So this is just kind of, you know, getting the initial information on there. And then when we put the, um, the other details on it later, it will look much better. So then I'm going to do my other ear. So this one is going to be very far to the left side of the head. So if this is the exterior of the um, circle, you just want to come in maybe I would say maybe about an inch and go up from that. This is going to be the one side of the ear. The other side of the ear is actually going to be kind of on the side of the face. So you can kind of travel directly over from this part, go over, 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 and then up just a little bit. That'll give you a good spot to start that one. And I've got this one going all the way up to my border in through here, and it's going to be a little bit to the left of this dot here. So I'm going to go up and to the left a little bit. That's going to be my tip of my ear. And now I'm just going to connect my dots. So this one I'm going to have, and again, this we're going to be seeing the side of this ear. So this ear is not going to get as much shape as the other one. So that's going to go like that. This is going to kind of stay nice and narrow in through here and then maybe just bump out a little bit like that. And then I'm just going to color it in like that. I'm going to put myself on a little bump about halfway down this face. This is going to be where my little pig snout is going to go. So something, and I'm not doing it a lot, just a, just a little hint of a pig snout going in through there. I need to close off the neck, so right below the pig snout is where I'm going to bring this out kind of like that. And then on the back side of um, the body and through here, I'm going to go right below that ear and I'm going to make myself kind of a curved line that just meets the edge of my, of my barn. I'm going to color this whole section in with my base color. I think I must have scratched my fingernail in through there or something. Um, and this entire section gets colored in with this mauve or this, I don't even know if that's the correct color I'm calling it, but this drab, burnt sienna, unsaturated color that we're using. So just color this entire section in and then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this base coat on your cute little piggy, you can wash 
and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting shadows on all of our wood pieces. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using black and rust. So how I'm gonna do this is in my head, my light source is really high up in the sky. So all of my shadows are gonna be below all of the objects. So I'm gonna have a shadow below here, underneath these um, doors. I'm gonna have shadows on the siding here, I'll have shadows underneath here. I'll even have a shadow on this piece of board here that's gonna be from the pig's head. So I'm going to be putting black and rust on my brush at the same time. And I'm really just going to be, well, I need a little bit more black here. I'm really just going to be adding an underline underneath most of these pieces. And you might find that black, if, you're, if your surface is really nice and dark, you might be able to get away with just using black paint. Um, but if your surface is a little bit lighter than black and the rust will look, will be a nice um, shadow effect there. So in through here, I'm gonna have this, I think I'm gonna have a little bit of a shadow behind this side in through here. And then these doors or these, the doors on the windows, I'm gonna have um, the shadow casting in like an angle. So it shows that they're, um, open away from the the wall of the of the barn so i'm just kind of rubbing in that color so a shadow does not have to be just black paint a shadow should um in essence kind of be whatever the surface is that it the shadow is on only darker so at times it will appear to be black the closer that shadow is um to uh, actual object, but the farther away it goes, the, the more dissipated it looks and it takes on more of that the actual color of the objects that it's on. So I'm going to start pretty darn dark up in through here and if my brush wobbles a bit, that's okay. It's an old piece of wood. It doesn't need to have perfectly clean edges and then I'm just going to kind of bring this down and then just get this to almost fade in along that edge. So it could be a clean edge if you wanted it to be, or it could have a little bit of a, of a gradient, whatever is visually appealing to you. That will tell the story of how close the light source is. And then once I've got this shadow in through here, yeah, those look good. Then I'm gonna do shadows underneath here, so black and rust. And I'm really just gonna do an underline underneath them. Again, you could certainly do um, it a little bit more fancy than me, but that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm just giving it the illusion of a nice shadow and some dimension in through there. So that's good. And again, I'm using the rust just so I don't just have that um, solid black color underneath there. But if you want to have it, you're more than welcome to. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this one in through here. And then I'll do um, one final one underneath my pig face and through here. So I'm gonna have, if this is my face and through here, I'm gonna have it somewhere in through here. So this is gonna be more of a rough kind of um, shadow. And it's okay if you go into your, your pig a little bit because we're gonna be um, adding more stuff in through there as well. I'm gonna go over here and I don't have much paint on my brush and I'm almost dry brushing it. So that way you can almost see through that paint a little bit and I'm giving it kind of a, a bit of a curve or some shape along the edges so that way it, you know, it kind of speaks to the shape of the, the rounded shape of the, of the little pig's head. And I think that's all the places I wanna put it. Underneath here is gonna, doesn't really need a shadow cause the light is up there and it kind of disappears. I suppose you could put a little bit in between here if you wanted to, if you felt that you needed a little bit more separation, you could put a little bit in through um, between the, the door and the um, molding itself. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this, all your shadows on, you can wash and dry the medium brush and get ready for the next step.
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint, I'm gonna call it our pig skin. <laughs> I mean, guys, I wanna put the pink into our pig and that comes before we put fur on it. So we're gonna call it the pig skin and this'll be where we designate where the little snout is gonna to go to. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. The colors that I'm using are red, yellow, rust, and white. And I'm gonna create a custom pig skin color. <laughs> so how I'm gonna do that is I am going to, I'm going for kind of like a peachy pink. Um, this is this is in the realm of the color that I'm going for. I do know it's gonna be on top of this. So whatever I do is gonna get dulled down by this base coat here. So I'm gonna use a little red, a little yellow, a little rust, and a little white, and I'm gonna mix it all together. So that to me is a little dark, so I'm gonna add a little bit more white to it. And that's pretty good. I might just add a touch more red to it so it's more on the pinky side. Well, that's getting into the tone that I want. Just a touch more pink or a touch more red, there we go. So that's the color that I'm going for. And I'm gonna be using this color in not a ton of spots on the on the pig. I'm gonna be using it in um, where the snout is and then I'm gonna use it a little bit in the ear and then in a little bit maybe where the eye, near where the eye is gonna be. So I'm gonna start with my snout because I know that this is gonna be where this bump part is and then I can kind of move or work away from that. So again, he's looking, I don't know if it's a he, I just called it a he, but he or she is looking this way. So I've got my bump for my snout in through here. So I'm just gonna kind of start that in there. Um, I think they have kind of a little, almost a square-ish top to the nose. I don't want the right hand side to go much farther than, if this is my the right side of this ear, I wouldn't go much farther than maybe a half of an inch or an inch to the right of that. So if you come straight down from that, that's about as far out as you want your little snout to go. And then you can kind of just shape it. It's, it's kind of like a little ovally shape. I think it can kind of pop out a little bit on the edges, something like that. There's going to be a little mouth part down in through here. So I'll put that there. And of course, we'll be reshaping this thing as the, um, as the process goes. But that's kind of where I'm going to start with the shape of my little snout. And let me just kind of get this um, area where I'm going to have his little mouth perfect like that. I'm going to put a little bit of um, pig skin over here just to kind of lighten up this edge of the body because I want a little bit of a highlight in through there. I'm going to put a little bit on his um, the nose or the bridge of his snout, something like this. I'm going to put some where I feel the um, eye the top of the eyes are gonna go. So I'm gonna have one of my eyes in through here. I'm gonna have a pretty big eye in through here. So if you come from the left of the bottom of this ear, maybe about an inch or so, you can give yourself almost just like an arcing kind of motion. This will be like where the eye, the top of the eye goes, something like that. And then come to the left of it and give just a sliver of that over on this side here, because we're only seeing a bit of the eye over on this side. Then I'm gonna put some in the ears. So this ear, we're gonna see the exterior of the back of the ear. So I'm gonna just kind of give myself a little bit of a shape in through here, something like that. And then I'll kind of outline the little front of the ear like that. I'll go over to this ear. This ear, I'm gonna see the skin part is gonna have a showing on the edge of the ear, something like this. Then I have a bunch of skin on the inside of the ear, but I don't really wanna give it a solid color. So what I'm gonna do, I, don't, I didn't um, add more paint to my brush. I'm gonna just kind of rub it in, in like this arcing kind of way and almost like a dry brush kind of way. This way it starts the movement of the skin in through there. Um, let's see where else, maybe a little bit on the forehead, but not much. 
Again, we're gonna have some, some fur, but we don't really need too much of the skin part, maybe just a little bit in through here. And then back in through here, I think I'm just gonna put just a touch, something like that. And you can see it's starting the motion of the shape of the body as well. And then we are gonna actually, let's, we're gonna switch brushes to our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your pig skin on, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are putting the eyes, nostrils, and the mouth, the opening of the mouth on. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black, rust, and white paint. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm gonna start with just black paint, and I am going to put my first layer of my eyes on, which is just gonna be with black. So these, the eyes that I'm doing are gonna be kind of on the larger side for a pig because I want it to look on the younger side and have that extra cute factor. So I've got mine a little bit extra big. If you wanna make yours larger or smaller, you're more than welcome to. I'm putting this, the, the larger or the eye closest to us, directly between my ear and my nostril. So you want it about halfway between the ear and the nostril, somewhere about here. Of course, it would if you placed this in the same place as I did, you'd be right on the button, but if you didn't, this will be a good spot and you can always readjust your eyebrow later too. So I'm gonna make this kind of like the shape of an almond. So it's gonna be kind of like a curved top, a curved, bottom like this. I'm actually gonna have the um, this right corner is up a little bit higher than the inside corner of the eye. So that way it um, just adds a little, a little more extra cuteness to it. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna color it in with black paint. You can also um, utilize the corner of the, the inside corner of the eye if you pull a little bit of this dark color down past that corner, that's gonna add that little crease that a lot of people and animals have right in that in that little tiny spot of their eye. So I've got the first layer there. Now I'm gonna come over and do this eye over here. This one is gonna be just a sliver of the eye. So I'm just kind of finding a spot that's good. I'm just doing a little, little tiny bit in through here and just make sure it looks proportionately accurate with the with the other one and then i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to put some nostrils on so the nostrils are almost halfway down the snout um, they can obviously vary depending on the depending on the pig. I'm gonna use black and rust on my brush for the um, little nostrils. And because it the, the pig is looking over here, my right nostril is not gonna be all the way to the right. It's gonna be a little bit in towards the center of the um, nose. So somewhere about here, I'm gonna put my little nostril and then it's got a little kind of I don't even know what this is, a little separator piece going to the side. And I'm gonna do the same thing over on the left-hand side, gonna find where I wanna, I think I want it right about in through here, and then just kind of make that little separator. I want these edges to be on the softer side for the nostril, so I'm actually gonna just wipe my brush off on my paper towel. While this is still wet, I'm gonna just kind of rub out the edges of it so it's, almost soft around the edges and you can use a little bit of water if you need to to get it to be softer and if they end up a little bit too big or a little bit in the wrong spot don't worry because we've got a, a step that's going to soften those edges even more and make them blend into the snout a little bit more so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to put my mouth on so again my my Pig is looking over towards me over here. So I'm just gonna kind of give a little, a little almost smile. It's a happy little pig in through here. And then that's all I'm gonna, oh wait, I need, my, I need to finish my eyes. So once I've got that little mouth on there, I'm gonna wash my brush, wash and dry my brush, 
and I want to add a little twinkle in my eye, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of white paint. So I am going to do a little almost um, dash and a dot is a, what I'm going to do. So I've got a little kind of rubbed in dash and then maybe a little dot. And then the other side, I'm just going to kind of put a little mark on the edge of the eyeball. And I'm going to put little eyelashes too. So I've got a little bit of white on my brush and I'm just going to put some little kind of eyelashes coming down in through this edge of the um, the top edge of the eye and maybe a couple over on to there. And that's all I'm gonna do for um, those areas. So we are going to be using our large brush for the next step so you can put your small brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are adding the shadows on the pig. So uh, we don't need to do much for this. So I'm gonna be using my large brush. I'm gonna be using black and rust paint. Um, if you need to or want to, you can also go back into your original um, color, that muted rusty color that we put on there, our mauve color. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna kind of talk you through where the shadows are gonna go, and then again, we don't need a lot of paint. So we'll put a shadow along the edge and the bottom of the snout. We're gonna put shadows underneath the chin. We'll put shadows behind the ear and maybe down in this little, where the pig is going into the barn a little bit. We'll put little shadows in this crevice of the ear, maybe a little shadow in through here, maybe, hints of shadows on the contour of the face too, but not a whole heck of a lot. So I'm gonna touch my brush in black and rust, and again, you do not need a lot of paint. So a teeny tiny bit on the end of my brush, black and rust, and so little that I'm gonna wipe it off on the side of my palette, so very, very little bit. I'm gonna start in the areas that I feel safest, which is the areas that could be the darkest. So you can start in through here, and you're just gonna kind of rub yourself a little bit of paint in through there, really like a dry brush kind of technique. I want a little bit behind that ear, so something like this, and just pull it down the back a little bit. And again, I'm not doing much of anything. I want some underneath that chin, so something like this, just to pull in some of those dark, those dark tones, something like that. I want a little bit on the um, side of my snout. So this, I'm gonna go a little bit slower and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of push my brush right towards the edge of that snout. And if you needed to or wanted to use a smaller brush, you could certainly do so. I'm gonna push it right in through there, right underneath this cute little piggy bottom lip right in through there. And if you go into your background, don't worry, it's it will disappear when it dries because it's on top of the black. Um, so something like that. And then to, to make sure that this kind of blends into there, what I'm gonna do is I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel. You could even use a little bit of water on your brush and you can get this to just kind of dissipate a little bit if you wanted to. Or you could pull in a little bit of that that background color as well to get that to just kind of blend in a little bit more but you want it nice and dark right where it meets that snout and again we're going to be adding highlights and fur and all kinds of other stuff so if it doesn't look super awesome right now don't worry about it i'm going to put a little bit of shadow underneath this little crease of the ear i think i want a little bit more black on my brush just so i can so i can get that to, yeah, there we go, that's a nice shadow. We're gonna put a little bit of a shadow in through this ear, in through there, cause that's that's where the darkest spot would be. And hmm, I don't think I want very much more. Um, you could go, I don't know, a little bit of the rust, maybe on this back side of the face, but you really don't need much. Maybe, maybe a touch back here. I, I think that I think that's all I want to do. And then I'm going to switch brushes to my medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadows on your cute little pig, you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm doing the highlights on my wood pieces or my window pieces. I'm gonna use my medium brush. I'm mostly gonna be using white with a little bit of yellow, but you might find that you wanna make yours on the grayer side or with a little bit of the rust or whatever, whatever floats your boat. You just want it nice and light up at the top of these sections. So I'm gonna put a big old highlight up in through here. So I have white with a touch of yellow on my brush and I'm just kind of adding this extra bit of um, brightness up on the top of here. This is gonna look fantastic when we have our big flowers adorning the top of our canvas. So this is just telling the story of the sunshine is definitely alive on this farm and we're just gonna add a whole bunch of nice sunshine up in through there. And if you needed to, you could certainly go back into your rust or your black or whatever, whatever you need to do to make this into the color that you, you want, but I definitely want that brightness way up at the top. When I get to these pieces in through here, I'm really just gonna be doing a bright line at the top of the object. So right now I have yellow and white on my brush and I'm really just gonna kind of cast a, a little bit of this highlight at the top of these. It does not have to be a straight line, just something that says, yep, the sunshine's hitting this, this part right here. I know we already put the shadow in through there, but we still can add the highlight in through the remaining area that we have to the left and the right of that shadow part. So something like this. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add it over here on these pieces. And again, yellow and white are the colors I'm using, but you could certainly alter it whatever way that you'd like. And then we are going to be using our large paintbrush for the next step. So once you've got these beautiful highlights on your wood pieces, you can wash and dry and get your large brush ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're putting the first layer on our flowers. So I'm gonna be using my large brush and I'm gonna be using blue, purple, and black. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to be using the blue and the purple first to add the areas where I want my flowers and then I'll be coming in with a little bit of black to just add a little bit of shadow underneath them. So these flowers, we're gonna be making them larger than they are in real life. So these are a flower that's called a periwinkle flower and this flower is typically really, really tiny and it grows in these clumps that kind of climb and um, are low to the ground and they just kind of, they're, they're spreaders. So I thought that they're, they're really pretty though. So what I wanted to do was add them to my painting like they climbed all over the window and they grew really large. <laughs> so we're gonna make them really bigger than they actually are in real life. So I, and they can come in all these varying shades of this bluish periwinkle color. I'm not quite sure if the color came first or the flower came first, but the, it's like a bluish purple color so they can be in all different varying shades. So we're gonna, we're gonna attempt to give it a lot of a color array here. So what I'm gonna do, I've got my big brush. I'm adding purple and blue onto my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna, this first layer is just gonna be a series of polka dots. So I'm gonna have mine kind of climb in here. Maybe it's gonna be hanging over the side here. I do know that these two colors that I'm currently using are very translucent. So when they dry, they will be much darker than they are when they're wet. So I am mentally preparing for that. I'm okay with that because we're gonna do a second layer later that will make them pop off our canvas and make them so, so pretty. Now you can put these wherever you want to. I'm just gonna kind of get mine climbing over the sides and maybe climbing out of the inside of the barn, which I'm not quite sure how that would happen, but we're gonna make it happen in, in our magical painting way. And I think this one I'm gonna have kind of coming down this side. And right now I'm just alternating my blue and purple. I'm gonna have this one maybe over here and hanging down here. And again, you can have yours wherever you want and as full as you want. Oops, that's a big one. Hold, hold the phone there. Let me just kind of 
wipe that away. There we go, look it. The magic of a paper towel. So I'm gonna get some coming in here. This one's gonna be hanging over this whole side out here. Maybe this is gonna come down here. I'm gonna pick up some blue right now. And again, I'm just alternating these two colors, blue and purple. And then once I feel like I've got it in a good assortment, what I'm gonna do is I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel and I'm gonna pick up black paint because I know the black is gonna overpower that blue and purple. And really what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dot below some of these flowers a shadow onto the surface below it. So I'm using a similar dotting technique and I'm just putting a little bit of black below these flowers as if they are casting a shadow right on the wall. And of course I could certainly use the rust as well based on what I was telling you earlier it doesn't just have to be black but I'm going for these shadows to look like they're really close to the object so they I can get away with doing them black and I want them to be very powerful looking so I'm, I'm again cashing in my creative license and I'm going to do a really dark shadow between be behind these flowers and so I'm going to put some in through here and then we are going to be using the same brush for the next step so once you've got your first layer of your flowers yeah that looks pretty you can wash and dry the large brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're painting some pig fur so <laughs> what i've learned is that some pigs are very hairy <laughs> some of them have I didn't even realize it. When I go to do these paintings, I'm like, oh, I'd love to paint a pig. And then I go and I look at all these pigs and it's like, oh my gosh, there's so many varieties. They have spotted pigs and they have long haired pigs and short haired pigs. And it's just the assortment was kind of unbelievable to me. So I'm gonna just put some kind of short-ish fluffy hair, pig hair, pig fur on mine. Um, I want him to look like he's in the sunshine, so a lot of mine is gonna be done with white paint. I'm using my large brush. I may end up using a little bit of um, the skin color plus white as well, just to add, um, if I need any little bit of dimensional um, elements to the fur. But the biggest trick or the biggest tip I can give you when doing this, especially since we're not adding a ton of fur and it's not long hair or long fur, don't use a lot of paint on your brush. So we have this great, if you're using a similar brush to me, the, this bristle brush has firm bristles to it. So if I just put a tiny bit of paint on the brush, I can utilize the corner and I can really get these nice individual little pieces of fur to appear with very little effort. If you pick up a big scoop of paint, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have just one solid color and you'll lose all of that um, dimension that we have worked so hard to achieve. So very little paint. <laughs> and if something goes wrong, you can either use a little bit of water to wipe it away or just wait for it to dry and then you can add back some of the darker colors. So if I haven't scared you enough, Let's paint fur. <laughs> so I'm gonna take just a tiny bit of my white on the corner of my brush and I'm gonna tap it on the side of my palette or you could use a paper towel or something like that. Again, I'm starting with very little um, and then if I want more, I can add more. So I'm gonna put my fur in the direction I feel it would be growing. So on the forehead, I feel it would be growing in a backward motion like that around the ears, maybe I'll have it little prickling coming up like this. Maybe he's got a little bit of fur on the edges of the ears, so you'll see how I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna start at my forehead and I'm just gonna kinda use the corner of my brush. And I was very cautious and put very little paint on my brush, so I need, I actually need more paint, but I'd rather need more than ha to have too much on my brush. So I just reloaded a little bit more and now you can see I'm getting those cute little individual um, pieces of fur and I'm just going, I don't know if it's fur or hair. I would think it's fur because it's an animal, but some, some animals I'm finding also have hair. So I th I'm, not, I'm not quite sure what the correct um, one is for, for pigs, but 
I'll call it fur for now. And so I'm just kind of going in the direction I feel that it would be growing and you can see it's coming to life every little stroke I make. I feel like there's, there'd be some on the side of the face. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the direction. I know I'm gonna need a little bit on that nose, so something like that. Maybe um, in through the underneath the chin, we've got some coming in like that. And then I think I'm gonna go into a little bit of my um, nose or my skin color plus a little bit of white just to give me a little bit different of a color as I'm going in through like maybe this cheek area so something like this just pulling a little bit of this up in through this direction and again you might find that you want to add way more than I am adding. You might want yours to be really super duper fluffy. We're going to um, do uh, additional details on the eyes and stuff in a little bit. But right now, I'm just kind of getting some, some of this pretty, you know, fluffy fur around the edges. Maybe there's a little bit coming out of the ear. I think they have some going along the edge of their ears, too. So something like that. So if I did it on that ear, I've got to kind of put a little bit on this ear. Maybe there's a bit on the edge in through here. Maybe a couple of little pieces coming off the top. Maybe there's a little bit in through here. So you can really, you know, you can see that I'm just kind of going around the whole head. I think I'm going to put a little bit more on the head area. So it's definitely a little bit more whiter and fluffier. Yeah, there we go. And again, I'm, I'm conscious that I'm keeping it in kind of a curved fashion. I don't want it to be too straight when you're doing fur. If you, um, if you do it too straight on a curved part of the body, it ends up losing a little bit of that um, L, the, the dimensional element. You might make a section look a little bit flat. So if you can kind of, um, be conscious about keeping your your fur going in um, with a little bit of a curve to it. That's going to help you to keep the shape of the uh, of the body or of whatever um, whatever part that you're doing. So I think I definitely need a little bit more near the eye. So I'm just going to kind of keep building this until he's looking as fluffy as I want him to. And then again, we, we we're going to add a little bit more uh, details throughout the entire, um, like the nostril or the nose and stuff like that. So if it's not looking a hundred percent to you know where where you think it's awesome yet, just know that you'll have those extra little bits of information that we're going to be putting on the. Um, on the nostril or on the, the snout and stuff in a minute. So I just kind of am making sure that I've got enough of my little fur in through here onto the face. And again, if you feel like you need to or want to go back into any of that original color, if, you know, let's say in through here, you thought that you needed a little bit more shape, you can certainly just kind of go back into that original um, color and just continue to tweak it until you feel like you've got that fluff and that fur in the direction that you want. Oh yeah, that's looking good. I think I want a little more, a little more on the head. I can't wait to fin. I keep looking at it. I'm like, ah, but I want to do the snout right now, <laughs> but I can't because that's a separate step. So we'll do that in a minute. But just know, I'm really anxious to get the snout done right now. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to kind of keep adding my little fluffy fur. And again, less is more. You just kind of keep adding it until you feel like you've got um, the right amount of fluff that you want and then let's see what are we going to do for the next step I think I, I got to finish the face so we're going to use our small brush for the next step um, so once you've got all of your cute little fur on you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step okay 
So what we're doing for the next step is we're finishing our peg because I can't wait any longer. I totally, I totally want to finish it and I'll, I'll save my flowers for later. So I am going to be using, I, I don't know, remember what brush I told you, but we're going to be using the small brush. I think I said the small brush, but for some reason I had the medium one in my hand. So I'm going to be using my small brush. And what this is going to be is just a whole bunch of little bits of highlights and little detail work. So I want to finish my snout so it's got some good dimension in it. So I'm going to add some highlight on the top, probably some highlight underneath these nostrils and on the lip. I want to add some highlight over here on the left side on the where the um, eyebrow areas are. I want to add some highlight on the ears. So lots of little kind of mostly highlights, but just kind of fine tuning. I'm going to use mostly white. I'll be using my small brush and I'm sure at some point I'm going to be using a variation of my pigskin color. So I'll either be using that or in a little lighter tone or a little darker tone. So I'm going to start by working on my little snout. So I'm going to add white paint to my brush and I'm going to put a nice big highlight on the top of my snout, something like this. And then what I'm going to do, I'm also going to put it a little bit underneath these nostrils. And then without washing my brush, I'm picking up some of my pig skin color and I'm going to get it to blend in. So what this is going to do is it's going to give me that natural highlight at the part that's being hit or highest pointed up towards the light source the most. And then I'm getting it to blend in with the rest of the skin. So you could even go a little bit darker on the skin down below of the snout. So wherever your comfort level is with the in, with the brightness intensity, you bring it there. So if you're if you're thinking that you want yours lighter or darker, you bring it there because that's what's going to um work for you visually, but the parts that are going to hit the um, the light source the the most are these areas that are pointed kind of in an upward fashion. So I'm also going to do it on part of the lip too. But right now I just am working my way down towards the bottom of the the snout area, just making sure I've got that um, as gradiated or gradual as I want. I might actually add a bit more pink too in a second. So hold the phone for just one second. I'm going to put a tiny bit of a highlight on this little lip. Yeah, that's the cute part. <laughs> when you add those itty bitty little details, it's like, okay, now he's got this cute little pouty lip on there. Um, I think I want more traditional pink on this snout. So I, I didn't say I was going to use red, but I'm using red. I'm going to take some red and white, just straight red and white is going to give me a nice pink. I think I, I just, I feel it needs that traditional pink, pink color as opposed to like the peachy color that I'm, that I've um, really put a lot in there. So I'm just going to, yeah, that's, that's going to work. Maybe, maybe a little more intense around these nostrils. Just, you know, to add that extra, extra bit of something, extra bit of um, tonal change to yeah there we go a little bit of a little bit of um that real pinky kind of color in through there and again that's just because i saw it and i'm like mm, i think i want some of that traditional pink but you can certainly work yours into um looking in whatever way you want oh my god he's so cute <laughs> i'm gonna add a touch more highlight on the nose on this little snout, I want it to really pop out, and I think I, I think this is a little, um, a uh, little, little weird over here. So I think I'm gonna add more of my um, skin, my little pig skin, in through there. Yeah, that works. Oh my god, he's so cute. And inside your nostrils, if you need to do anything with those, if you feel like you need to get them to blend in a little bit more, feel free to just keep working those as much as you want. He's so cute. Sorry, I can't take it. I like, I like painting cute, cuteness, cute animals. They really, they really um, make me smile. 
I'm gonna put a little bit more highlight in through here. All right, so once you've got your, your snout the way that you want it, I'm gonna just start adding little bits of highlight and information all along the rest. So I definitely want some highlight down in through here. So I'm adding some white paint to my brush. I'm just gonna bring in some um, extra bright highlights in through here just to say that this is this is a part that is really being illuminated by whatever the light source may be. I'm going to add some maybe on uh, the bridge of his his or her nose something in through here. I think I'm going to bring in some of the the skin color too maybe just to get this a little bit more um, looking like it's protruding a bit. So whatever you feel that you need to do, I'm just kind of adding little little streaks of these colors just to get it to be a little bit more of a, of a dimensional element. And whenever you bring a color like that in, you don't just want to put it there. So if, if you put it there, also bring it into a neighboring area as well. So it doesn't just look like you've um, only hit that one one section you want to definitely carry that color elsewhere so maybe we'll put a couple of little extra wrinkles on the nose maybe we'll put a little extra fluff on that part of the head something like that i definitely want to put some extra little bits of highlight on these eyebrow areas or eye eyebrow yeah i i um, eye socket areas. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. So maybe something in through here as well. Yeah, that's looking cute. Um, maybe some extra little highlights on the tips of the ears. Adding just again, just those that information of you know where is that that light source coming from. I think I want more in through here too, just to. I keep looking at it saying, I think that needs needs a little more light on it. So whenever, you know, that's the whole thing. Sometimes you need to step back from it, see it from a distance. And if you feel like you need more, more light or more information, just put it there. Usually your instincts, your intuition will tell you what needs to be done. You know, it, we don't always need to have a photo reference to go by. We can go by our own personal knowledge. I mean, I know what a pig looks like. And if I stand away from this and it doesn't look like a pig, I figure out what about it doesn't look like a pig. Is it because the ear is too big or is it because the eyes are in the wrong place? So I can use my own knowledge and my own you know experiences to say yeah there's something wrong there but sometimes you can't figure it out and you need a second eye you need to bring in your kid or bring in your spouse or bring in somebody else to to help work you through that that um challenging part of figuring it out but usually you can figure it out yourself um i want to add some extra life around this eye so usually by putting just an extra bit of a highlight in through um, right around it, that helps to just make that eye come to life. So I'm going to add almost maybe like some additional little fur around the eye, almost as if they're little eyelashes down below. I know we added them on the top, but I'm feeling like we want to add some here too. So I've got that. Yeah, see? those little bits. I think I'm going to put a little bit of this color here, a little bit over here. And of course, you can certainly keep tweaking this as much as you want. I mean, you can you can add these these bits of colors all throughout it. I think that was that was a little bit too much for my for my liking. I'm going to bring back some of my original color on that one. Um, and then when you get this into a place where you're feeling comfortable and you're digging everything that's happening on your little on your little piglet here, we are going to be um, using our medium brush for the next step. So you just kind of keep tweaking until you've got all of your little snout wrinkles and highlights and stuff perfectly placed and that you're happy with it. And then we're gonna go on to the medium with the medium brush for the next step so you can just get ready. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting periwinkle flowers. So I'm gonna use my small, or excuse me, my medium brush, and the colors I'm using are purple, blue, and white. Um, and again, I'm just doing a loose interpretation of these flowers. They come in various shades and sizes and, and, and colors and all that good stuff, but I'm gonna just do a loose interpretation of them. Um, so from the best of my knowledge, they have five petals and a periwinkle color is a kind of a light um, bluish purple color. So I'm going to be mixing some of my purple and my blue and a touch of white to get a periwinkle color. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be using a couple of different shades of this, but first I'm just gonna kind of get myself a base um, color to use for the majority of my flowers. And then as I am building my, my flowers, I will, you know, maybe use a lighter version of this or a little bit darker of a version, but you'll see how this is going to go. So I am not going to, um, stress out and make every single, every single flower exactly as, um, as if we were seeing it close up and in focus. I'm just going to do maybe a few in focus ones in here, a few in here, and a few in here, and then the rest is just going to be a loose, um, almost long dots for, for petals to kind of give you the illusion that there are other um, of the same type flower within the little bunch. So. I've got my periwinkle color and these flowers have five petals on them and the petal is almost like, so if you do one, two, three, four, five, the petal almost is a little bit wider at the end of it and more narrow at the base. So, you know, you can painstakingly do this to all of them, but I'm just gonna do it to a few of them and I'm gonna make it look as if we've got a whole bushel of these kind of um, flowers, but I'm not going to be terribly concerned about making every single one of them have the exact perfect characteristics of it. I just wanna give the viewer the illusion that this could be that type of flower. And you might not see them all head on. So maybe you you see one with, you know, just three because you're just seeing the side or four because you're just seeing the side of it. And again, I'm gonna do quite a few, not, a, a, not you know, 900 of them, but enough within each kind of main section that I have to give me a good representation and then I'll go on to the next section and do a good number in there as well. And then I will come back and do some um, of my kind of interpretive kind of ones that will give us the idea that we have many more involved in the, in the actual section, but without having to paint, you know, 7,000 of them. So I'm gonna go up here, I will do one of them up here. And you know, you can just do a five point star if you wanted to it, on the small, like these ones up here are a little bit smaller. So I'm not really concerned about making that petal look wider at the end as if I was really doing the in focus, making sure it is exactly like the original or the real kind of flower. So again, use your your best judgment in making this as um, authentic and in focus as you want it to be. Again, you don't have to have five on every single one because you might not be seeing all of them or all the, seeing the entire area of it. And I'm not putting them really on top of my shadows. So I'm putting them within the original um, kind of mass area that we did and oops, that was a lot of paint. And um, I am doing it kind of on the thicker side so that way it is not see-through. 
and I'm going to do just maybe one or two more in through here and again once I've got this oh this turned pretty dark when it dried up in through here which is great that that happens when you're using the dark or those translucent colors on a dark background so that's a good number of them that kind of appear in a you know a good um, orderly and balanced way now I'm going to take that periwinkle color and I'm just going to add little kind of pops of it here and there I'm not even not even to oh my other hand's going too while well. <laughs> I'm doing this I'm not even terribly concerned about where they're going I mean I am looking out for my shadows and making sure I'm not you know overloading it on the shadow area but I'm really just kind of dabbing my brush here and there just to give the um the pass that color along through um the entire area and now what I'm going to do without washing my brush I am going to be using some of that periwinkle color plus white and this is going to add little pops of highlights on the um, petals that we've already established. So I've got the periwinkle and white. So what's really going to happen is I'm just kind of adding a little lighter version of it within that existing petal. So something like this. And you've already got the shape. So just adding this bit of um, extra white on here is going to whip. And because you are using the same color with the white you're going to get various tones of it so you're going to have some lighter ones and some darker ones which is awesome and then i'm going to go ahead and just do this throughout the entire area wherever i want it to have these little extra um, highlights on the actual um, flowers that I've really kind of spent the most time on. I think I want something in through there too. That was a little naked spot there. So again, I'm using periwinkle and white to add these um, more in focus kind of highlights on the, the petals. I'm saving a little spot in the middle, which I probably should have told you about, um, because there's a little tiny center dot that we'll be adding in a second as well. So, oops, I need a little bit more white on my brush. There we go. And you can see I'm just kind of cruising along right now, and you might want yours to be a little bit more bright than mine. Maybe you want more purple in yours than then the blue, whatever is visually appealing to you. Now I've got, um, I think I am going to pick up a little bit more purple. I'm going to just add those little additional pops of color now that I've got that um, highlight that I added onto my real petals. So now I'm just kind of going through and adding some bits of, of, of the purple here and there and everywhere. And then I'm going to add a bit of a white little center. So I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm going to just wipe it off on my paper towel. I'm picking up a dot of white paint and there's a little tiny center in these flowers. So you can certainly, I'm just doing the ones that are kind of in focus and I suppose you could have the white with the periwinkle color on your brush at the same time just to give that little dimensional element to the centers of those flowers. And then if you feel like you want an additional pop of highlight, just add white with you know the purple and or the periwinkle and just go and just kind of make these little these little flicks of petals here and there and everywhere to just add a bit more color if you want to, if you want more purple or whatever the case may be, feel free to um, have fun. Oh my God, this is so cute. Have fun with this and make it as vibrant as you want. I'm digging my little, my little periwinkle flowers in through here. You can keep tweaking and playing with them as much as you want to. And then we have one little final step to go and it's going to be with your tiny brush. So once you've got these beautiful complimentary flowers all over the place you can um, get your small brush out wash it dry it and get ready for the next step all right so we are on to the final step this is the final step of every painting which is to sign it i usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right but you could certainly sign yours wherever you'd like i'm going to be using my small brush I'm going to be using black paint 
and I think I'm going to sign this one in the bottom left. I use my initials to sign my paintings, but you could certainly use your first name or your or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like to use as your identifying mark is totally up to you. There's no rules to this part of the painting. So that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a pretty little precious pig and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.